um, before. So we will just jump into the conversation and um, yeah, and okay. continue. Okay, yes. Thank you. So uh, Claude Silver, I'm so excited to have you on Your Brain's Coach podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. So appreciate your time. Thank you so much for, for having me. I'm excited for our conversation. Yes, me too. You know, I've been researching uh, your work and your biography a lot, and I was so excited to interview you for many reasons, not just, you know, because you're a chief heart officer at the Viner Media and, uh, you know, you know a lot about how to build culture, and that is such a hot topic um, in today's world of work, but also because um, I was really excited to learn from you more about your personal story, and I'll tell you why. I learned from your other interviewers that you consider yourself a late bloomer and you switched quite a lot of things in your life, right, before coming to what seems to be your calling. And I'd like you to maybe tell our listeners a little bit more about that, like where you started and how you ended up where you are. Because I also believe that a lot of people, actually, I believe most of the people are more late bloomers. But because of the society, it's like you have to figure your things out by the age of X. People are afraid to switch things. And of course, you know, we accumulate baggage. And the more of that baggage we have, the more difficult it is to switch. <laughs> very true. Very, very true. Um, well, thank you so much. I, I, yeah, I'm happy to go into that. I have always, always been uh, interested in people and how and what makes us tick. Like why mm -hmm. we do the things we do, you know, what, where our triggers come from, why people are nasty, why people are optimistic, those types of things. And I've always had that interest from a very young age. I think I had, you know, a lot of intuition as a, as a very young girl mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't know it was intuition. I just knew I was picking up on feelings and vibes and, you know, there came a time in my life where I picked up on so many vibes, I got over, I would get overwhelmed, you know, I would, I would get um, oversaturated, I didn't know how to kind of protect myself and boundary myself. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, I was a, a very poor student, very, very poor student, and that really hurt my self esteem in many ways and my confidence. So here I was a feeler able to feel so much. My grades were terrible. I didn't create any options for myself, mm. which is added to the late bloomership, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my parents who love me and, and only wanted the best for me would say, you think too much with your, your heart, Claude, when are you going to think with your head? And I just thought, I don't even know what that means. I have like a missing chip, you know, mm. they need to put a microchip in. So I spent a lot of time coaching people, playing tennis, you know, always facilitating growth and change with people, whether or not I was teaching tennis, whether or not I, I ran a surfing company, an outdoor adventure company, whatever it was, being with people and helping them unlock something makes mm -hmm. me so happy. And I've had many unlocks in my own life. It wasn't mm -hmm. until I really, two things, until I really understood that the only person I could change was me. And I learned that in my thirties. Yeah. So until I learned that that was rough. And I also learned that only I can fix the, the noise in this head. Mm -hmm. Only I know how to change the narrative, change what I'm saying into something that is more truthful, uh, more honest, more truthful and real. Rather than saying over and over, I'm dumb, I'm dumb, I'm dumb, I found ways to, to find a more honest narrative. And those things helped propel me into, I think, being an adult, quite frankly. And that was in my 30s. So mm -hmm. that's a little bit about my journey. Yeah, I... I can, you know, so relate to this uh, feeling that you're missing something. I, I, I believe, you know, uh, when I feel that way, it's like the world tells you that success is this and you're not getting it. And 
that is why, you know, <laughs> I'm, you know, even feeling this like myself, you might like miss, be missing something, right? There is something wrong with you. And, um, you know, I actually want to ask you, so how were you able to transform that self-talk? Because I believe a lot of people might be experiencing the same, like the world tells you, well, this is success, you're not reaching it. So therefore there must be something wrong with you. How do you transform that and say, no, there is nothing wrong with me. And actually it just, you know, this is how I see the world and this is what I want to do. And this is not my version yeah. of success. Well, it's easier said than done, but I'll tell you what I did and what I have to do a lot because it's not like it goes away forever. I mean, we're humans, right? We're conditioned a certain way. Yeah. But what I did was I wrote down the negative sentences that were going on in here. I wrote them down on a piece of paper mm -hmm. one day, you know, I'm dumb, so forth and so on. All those kind of like limiting beliefs, imposter syndrome things. And in the next column, I wrote if they're true, are mm -hmm. they true? And if so, how do I know they're true? Mm -hmm. Am I dumb? Mm -hmm. How do I know I'm dumb? I couldn't fill, I couldn't fill in the blank. How do mm -hmm. I know? I don't know. Nothing tells me in society I am, you know, nothing tells me I'm uh, unintelligent. And so mm -hmm. once I had this list of my imposter syndrome and my limiting beliefs, and the next column was how do I know if it's true and it was empty, Mm -hmm. Then I began to look for evidence of what was true. Mm -hmm. So and I'm really good with people. I really, I really know how to hold space with people. I lead with empathy. I believe in kindness and tenderness. These are all true things. Mm -hmm. And that's literally the things that I then put into my head. I am able to think critically and strategically. Now, if I was dumb, I wouldn't be able to, mm -hmm. right? Um, I'm a great friend, you know, and I would list out, how do I know these things? Um, mm -hmm. I, I've become a good friend to myself. Mm -hmm. So where I used to say I'm self-sabotaging myself, then I saw, oh, I'm becoming. So I really did it in a very linear way, which is funny because I'm not a linear thinker a lot of the time. Um, but I really don't think I had much of a choice. I was going, I just, I was stuck. I was mm -hmm. stuck. You know, I was repeating the same patterns, every relationship, the same narrative, the same story. I was so bored of myself. Mm -hmm. uh, that and I so, needed, I needed, yeah. And so this, this was like what helped you psychologically, right? As as I understand, like doing it helped me. Well, therapy helped me psychologically, but this helped me in a very tactical, mm -hmm. practical way. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, the psycho. Psych, when I was going to therapy, she would say, "You are enough. Mm -hmm. You matter." Like those mm -hmm. wonderful phrases. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't sinking in. I needed to become. I needed it to be more personalized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, personalized. And um, I guess after doing the, you know, this work, you also changed something in your career. Like I remember uh, hearing from one of the interviewers that you moved to London. Um, I don't know to maybe make this start more uh, tangible and more real like uh, could you also uh tell a little bit about that because again a lot of people might be uh, you know afraid to make this jump okay now I understand I I'm, I'm worth I'm worthy and I know I'm what I'm good at and I want to make this switch like but how do I make it you know will it work like what maybe help you to make this jump well I got offered a job so that's the first thing but mm -hmm. I was very happy and content in my life I was living in San Francisco. I had a bunch, you know, my friends there, my, my stuff, my life there. But I knew that, I just knew it in my heart. Opportunity knocks once or twice. Mm -hmm. And that was a big knock on my door. And mm -hmm. the, the CEO of the company said, I hear we need someone with your skill sets. <laughs> and that was enough for me. Now, mm -hmm. the old pod would have said, what skill sets do you mean? Mm -hmm. But the, the Claude that was centered said, when do you need me there? <laughs> yeah. Very big difference. Yeah, and that was, go ahead. 
Sorry to yeah. interrupt. And, and then two weeks later, I was there. And my life took off in a completely different way. Completely different. I, I, I was almost starting again. I was 40. Mm -hmm. And really finding a way to befriend myself mm -hmm. and to watch my emotions travel down a stream rather than be so attached to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, that work that you did prior to that offer uh, and making yourself ready for that. Um, and then, yeah, having this opportunity that the coming two things coming together were uh, what was allowed what, what allowed you to make this, you know, switch and jump and uh, finally, I guess, reconnect with what you were designed for, so to speak. Yeah, right? so, so to speak. And I love, you know, I, I'm a person that loves traveling. I love different cultures. I love getting lost. Mm -hmm. You know, I love adventures. And so going to London, not knowing anyone mm -hmm. and finding myself and finding a community was incredible challenge. And mm -hmm the best, the best challenge. I, and I needed it. I didn't know I needed it. I just knew that there was a knock on the door and I said, okay, let's go. Yes. Uh, you know, it takes a lot of courage differently, but if it feels right yet, yeah, I just want to, you know, reiterate that you have to make the jump, right? Yeah. I mean, no one's going to do it for you. If anything, yeah. you're going to get pulled someplace and you'll wake up in 10 years and say, I didn't want to be here. How did I get yeah. there? Or yeah. you'll say, okay, I love it here, but I didn't intentionally make the move here. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I can still relate, you know, on a personal note, uh, I moved to Sao Paulo just before the end of the year, not necessarily with a specific goal. I just felt like I needed to change. And I'm like, if not now, then I don't know when I'm going to be ready. <laughs> so, right. right. Good for you. It's an um, incredible city. Wow. Um, incredible city, yes. And, um, you know, I, I already met people. It was like a rough transition because I didn't speak the language, but um, it just felt right. Like I, I needed to move now without a plan, just feeling that it was right. Um, so again, thank you for sharing this part of the story, just because I believe from what I'm, you know, hearing in the media and in uh, reading about our culture, it's just a lot of people are in this transition because, you know, what's happening in the world and maybe not everyone necessarily feels like that they're ready or they found everything that they you know were looking for or they have the opportunity but maybe they do feel like they they want to make a change and so yeah if you hear a call or you want to make a change guess what are we ever ready yes and never. what does that even mean either <laughs> either you've prepared yourself in some way for the task at hand or you're a, an athlete or a ballerina but like, are we ever ready? No, we are always second guessing ourselves. So just put, yeah. I say, you know, put your courage cape on and take a risk because almost every decision you make can be undone. Almost every, almost every. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and yeah, I guess, you know, there's can be a lot of said about like protecting your, um, uh, like, back a little bit right so you do have the option to uh, go back etc but yeah do the jump when it feels right and you know from here I'd like to transition to something that a lot of um, people were you know excited about when they found out that I would interview you um, it's you know creating people-centric um, heart-centric culture in companies um, and um, first, you know, I actually want to start with something that you have on your website and probably everywhere, um, the concept of emotional optimism. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to read the, um, uh, what, the passage on your website. Emotional optimism, optimism is simply an awareness that we have the capacity to influence how we think and how we feel. Is it's a way to frame in cooperation with our whole selves and combine our thoughts and our feelings into new understandings. So I'd like to step you know, on this concept. Why emotional optimism? How did you come up with that? Well, I know I'm an optimist. 
but I'm also a psychologist in many ways. I'm very deep. I get very deep into, you know, the, our emotions. Like I, I, I often feel like I know how to swim to the top of the surface of the ocean, but I spend a lot of time down here in the, what makes us tick. And mm-hmm. that's, kind of the emotional that's like the sand on the bottom of the ocean the optimism is being able to swim to the top so here's something i i've rarely ever shared in my entire life um when i in 2012 i moved to london for the second time and my friend uh, took me to go see a shaman and all i gave the shaman was my birthday you know so mm-hmm. he, well, he was going to do the chart and I go into his, uh, his room, his office, and he looks like Gandalf. He's a huge white beard. He speaks mm. like Freud and, 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 and you know, uh, uh, Jung. And he looks at the chart and he looks at me, he looks at the chart, he looks at me, he looks at the chart and he says the following, you are the only person I've ever met that can be inside of a coffin and still see the light. And that is where emotional optimism comes from. That's, yeah, that's something amazing to hear. Thank you for sharing this story. I was like, whoa, I have never heard someone express exactly what it's, what things are like for me sometimes. And it doesn't mean coffin dead. It means I can be, I can exist in the dark. I've been in the dark. I've been in dark places, but I always know that there's change, change is possible. I always know there's someplace else for me to go. Mm-hmm. And it's it seems like it has become a filter, some sort of for your work, for your mission in this world. And maybe something that you are uh, transferring to other people when working with them or interacting with them. Oh. I hope so. I mean, I really hope so. I, I, I aim to work with people to ask them enough questions so I can identify where their block is, mm-hmm. where their limiting belief is. And mm-hmm. then I take them through the same thing I already told you I do. Mm-hmm. Like where, there's something that's not connecting here. Mm-hmm. What, what is it? Is it what you're telling yourself? Is it what your parents told you? What are you carrying? Why do you have to be such a perfectionist? Why Mm -hmm. is that insecurity coming up and you feel like you need to micromanage someone? Mm -hmm. Let's let's examine. And so Mm -hmm. I'm always examining with that. Tomorrow is another day. Let's get through this today. Let's get through this together. And I'm asking them a lot of questions and listening and listening for what they're not saying, obviously, Mm -hmm. and and really trying to do my best to help people go from here Mm -hmm. yeah, in the workplace. Mm -hmm. I think because I've been around people for so long and I've been in the working world for so long, I can pretty much spot, oh, you're being really hard on yourself. Oh, you don't, you don't allow yourself to smell the roses. Mm -hmm. So that means you don't allow your team to smell the roses. Oh, you're going so fast that you don't celebrate. Oh, Mm -hmm. why don't you celebrate? Huh? You know, were you celebrated? Like, did people recognize you? Do Mm -hmm. you not get recognition? You know, all these things. Yes. Um, You know, that reminds me of the question that somebody also asked me to ask you. Um, And I, I feel like it's related. The question is, well, Okay, um, I'm a leader of a team of organization. How do how can I make myself and perhaps even you know my leadership team a little bit more like that, like that heart, you know, chief heart officer? Uh, and um, that also means like how do you make people comfortable enough to also you know share that and vulnerability with me to be able to help them? Like how do how how can every leader, I guess what I'm trying to, to ask is, uh, how can people become yeah, more like chief heart officer and how can that be scaled? Yeah, well, 
people, there are tons and tons and tons of chief heart officers out there because I consider it someone that has a heart to be of service, right? Which mm -hmm. many of us do. How you make someone feel, how you leave them feeling, that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. When I'm with someone, am I also making them feel like they matter, like they're their value, even if I'm having a hard conversation. So for mm -hmm. me, it's always going to be, this is a conversation about them, not Claude. I'm mm -hmm. here to help them thrive, mm -hmm. spread their wings if they'll let me. And so thus I'm a passenger. I'm a passenger with them on their journey, meaning I don't have to have all the answers. I don't judge at all. And what they say to me stays in a very safe space because I'm trusted. I'm, I'm honored to be in that position. But at the end of the day, it's how did I make you feel? Mm -hmm. And that's what matters to me. Did I light you up? You know, mm -hmm. was I someone in the room that brought energy? Or did I come into the room looking at my phone? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? <clears throat> So um there's there's anyway to, sorry to cut you off um when we when we remember as leaders that we work for them mm -hmm. it changes everything yeah i think yeah being intentional about just what's your purpose yeah what's you, your purpose yeah yeah and, i mean do you want to be on the front page of every magazine? Okay, well, then that's your purpose. Let's figure out how to do that. Do you mm -hmm. want to lead a team of 200? Let's figure out how to do that. Anything, mm -hmm. anything is possible. And I believe in the workplace, if you have a healthy culture and one where people know you care about them mm -hmm. and you put them first, there's solutions to almost every problem mm -hmm. in the workplace. I'm not saying there's solutions to health. There's solutions to the manager. You don't like the manager. You don't like the feedback. You didn't get the raise you wanted. You want to move teams. You're not being recognized. We can work on all of that. Mm -hmm. um, yes, if if there is yeah, a culture where people feel comfortable to to share, to open up about those things that don't work. And you know, speaking of which, do you have any? Oh, strategies, you know, tips, I don't know, conversation starters or something that will help leaders to create, to install, so to speak, this culture of trust and psychological safety. Yeah. Pick up your phone and text five people. Thank you. I'd love to get together. I haven't seen you in a while. Hope everything is great. Heard you knocked it out of the park on that presentation. Reach out. Be mm -hmm. vulnerable. I want, I'd love to spend time with you. And that, but first you have to make the move. You cannot expect for a soccer ball to come to you all the time. Mm -hmm. You have to go to the ball. You have mm -hmm. to go to these people. I'm here, mm -hmm. I'm available. I would love to get time with you. And you know, people say to me all the time, oh, you're so busy. No, I'm not. I'm just as busy as you. Mm -hmm. I'm not, no, no busier. I'm just, you know, but making them feel like they're a priority. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, today I sent, someone gave someone a shout out on an email and I forwarded the email to that person. I don't know if that person knew that they got a shout out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why shouldn't I pass that good news around? So I say it again, I'm a passenger, mm -hmm. right? I am a passenger on people's journeys. I want their journey to be as smooth as possible, knowing that there's always going to be bumps in the road. Mm -hmm. There are some things I can see ahead of time that they may not be able to see because I've lived it. I've been through it. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, what I'm hearing is, again, get out of your head. And if you're there for other people, then ask, you know, those people, right? And communicate with people openly. And people more often than not will tell you, like, what's on their mind. Yeah. Like, how about this? Why don't you treat someone like you wish to be treated? Mm -hmm. Well, with kindness, with possibility, with yes. Mm -hmm. that's, how, that's how most of us want to be treated. I don't know anyone that wants to be 
told no all day. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, yes. Treat other people as you'd like to be treated. And I also think, you know, uh, what I'm hearing from you is treat other people as people first. Yeah. Right? How would you talk to uh, just just a person, <laughs> not necessarily yeah, your core? Yeah, we're not machines over here. Like we all have emotions and our emotions are very, very similar to one another. Our mm -hmm. life experience is very different. Our emotions are very similar. Mm -hmm. So um, meaning you and I are not that far apart. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. We are unique, but um, when it comes to humanity, right? Uh, yeah. not a um, you know, uh, to, to this point uh, about culture, um, what I hear a lot of leaders also say, um, they kind of make it sound like it's opposite, uh, caring about culture and, and about people and performance. Yeah. Um, how do you go about like, solving this i don't know sometimes again calls it it's it seems like it's a position you know uh, we care about performance but we also care about people like where do we set priorities yeah. and do we need to set priorities yeah okay time out i'm i have another meeting at two so let me just tell her i'm running late okay um, um I, let me know how many minutes you have also for for us so i can adjust how many how many this was scheduled for a half an hour how many more would you like I would like half an hour, actually, or <laughs> 20 Another, minutes. Can we do 20 minutes? Yes, we can. Okay, hold on one second here. <clears throat> uh, so, um... Okay, cool. Um, because we stopped that, let me just turn the light back on. Yeah, sure. It's on a timer. Okay, all right, cool. 20 more minutes, we got it. Thank you, appreciate yes, it. Yes, of course, of course. <laughs> yes. So yeah, well, I, I asked you a question about uh, culture and performance. Um, how do you deal with that, you know, seemingly to like, opposition between those two caring about people about performance how do you go about balancing that if you do balance or you think something yeah, I, mean, I, don't, I don't think there's a real balance I think you have to put people first even if that's one percentage two percentage points first it, mm -hmm. you can tell putting people first I believe taking care of them helping them sort out their own performance their own growth all of that stuff I believe drives success. The company then knows you're here for them and you are gonna do everything you can to get them from here to here. Mm -hmm. And that's, people feel that. And by the way, I've been at many organizations where that didn't happen and I felt that too. No one, you know, I was like, hello, is anybody out there? Anybody <laughs> out there? No safety net. I mean, I would work 13, 15 hours a day. No one mm -hmm. knew. Mm -hmm. And that was yeah. lonely. It was so lonely. And at the end of the day, I mean, I ended up leaving. It wasn't the right place mm -hmm. for me. But mm -hmm. when you are really invested and you know how many hours your team's working or your teammate is working, you know, you know that they've worked three weekends in a row. You're aware that they're, you know, they just got engaged. They're mm -hmm. in the hospital. They had a fight with their spouse. They're, I mean, people bring their life into work. So we need to take care of the person. And mm -hmm. then I believe we can unlock performance. Not in everyone, not in everyone, but you can figure out, okay, does this person need some training? Do they need some one-on-one -on -one training? Do they need to listen to podcasts? Do they need to, you know, do they need to spend more time with one of our other uh, leaders? Do they need to go to one of our other offices? Do we need to sit with them and really figure out if they have a learning block? Mm -hmm. You know, we do all of that for them and then the client, mm -hmm. but for them, putting people first, you know, the ROI, everyone asks me, what's the ROI of, of heart and putting people first? <laughs> well, what's not the ROI? 
it's sky's the limit happiness friendship yeah. warmth camaraderie inspiration innovation creativity but i don't believe you get that in a culture of fear for that yeah. long i think it lasts and then it's done people are like i didn't no no no, no i don't feel good you know yeah. someone coming to work on a Monday morning, freaking out is not what I want. Someone on Sunday night freaking out is not a good culture. It's not a good feeling. And I've had that, the Sunday mm -hmm. scare. So a lot of people have them. Mm -hmm. uh, and it reminded me of this you know, notion that people do so much more for friends, for family, for someone they feel related to connected to and when we yeah, when we feel that somebody cares we care um too a lot more than we would you know if we felt that nobody nobody just cared and um I, I think you just confirming that that you know culture this trust this caring um about people first uh that drives performance because just that's just how we humans are right we do so much more for our kids <laughs> Yeah. Well, I used to say, I said to one of our leaders a long time ago, he was, he would come into work and he would have armor up. He would just block himself from emotion. And thus he would block himself from connecting to other people. And I said to him one day, you know, when you go home and your kids run up to you and daddy, 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 what does that feel like? Oh, it feels so great. It feels like I'm the most important, luckiest person in the world. I said, well, when you come to work tomorrow, try to bring that, that feeling in mm -hmm. like a softness, not a weakness, a softness. People want to get to know you and you mm -hmm. keep them at a distance and that's not going to set us up for success. And it didn't, by the way. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Thank people, you. Yeah. I mean, we're wired to connect with one another and People want to work for leaders that have a sense of vulnerability that are real and, and can be authentic and also that have a direction. Okay, we're all going this direction and this is why. Okay, cool. I want to be there. I want to be there. Yeah, uh, but you're so right. Yeah, if you want people to connect with you um, and also uh, becoming a great leader for them, like you got to open up first. You got to yeah. show up in person. Yeah, you have. So, so ha this is, this is what it's like to be a great leader. You just said it. And to be a, a CHO, how we show up is everything. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, how do you show up every day? And then ask someone else, mm -hmm. how do I show up every day? You can ask yeah. them anonymously. How do you, how do I show up and mm -hmm. see if it matches each other? Yeah. Yeah. You know? It's a great advice, you know, just get feedback, uh, from people, you know, yeah. how, how about that. Yeah, we, yeah, we all want to grow. We all want to develop. Mm -hmm. um, I, I also wanted to ask you, uh, how do you scale that skill set, right? Do you scale it by just, you know, interacting with other people, um, you know, leaders maybe of teams of departments um, in that way and that transfers or you do any specific trainings or, you know, maybe you get together oh. to talk about those things? Yeah. So, so first and foremost, I spend time with a lot of people, loads mm -hmm. and loads of people. I have an incredible team that has modeled what they do after what I do. Mm -hmm. Spending time, holding space, not having judgment, helping direct them, point them in the right direction, connecting them with people. We have a phenomenal leadership team that does that too, that is able to really hold them and mm -hmm. move them, help them. And then I have, you know, people that I call culture champions mm -hmm. that have a jobs, they have their regular jobs, but I lean on them in all offices, in all different departments. If someone it needs to, you know, get to, uh, get to know 10 people, well, I have 10 people to introduce you to. And those mm -hmm. 10 people are going to introduce you to more 10 people. So that's mm -hmm. how you scale, right? Uh, and mm -hmm. visiting other offices, doing Zooms, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, one to many, mm -hmm. and you know, sharing that it, it, it's not a philosophy how we show up and making someone. How do you make someone feel? It's not a philosophy. It's a question. How do you mm -hmm. make someone feel? How do you want to make someone feel? Is yeah. that what's happening? Yeah, intentionality, right? How do you want yeah. to make? How do you want? 
people to feel and then just I think the answer will come to you how you need to yeah. show up for people to to feel that yeah um, this is the thing which is like baffles me is I want to feel just as good as the other person mm -hmm. I want to feel free I want to feel invigorated I want to feel inspired and I would say, I would imagine 99.9 .9 people want to do that too. <laughs> yes, um, so true. Uh, we are so much more alike than we think we're like different. Yes, we do. Uh, 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 and also on that, on that note of Zooms, et cetera, um, I'm curious uh, at Viner Media, um, you have offices in different parts of the world, right? So um, like what's percentage of um, your people are somewhere else, not in your head office? Um, gosh, I don't know the percentages, but I know in the New York office, obviously, is our bulk of our people. It's probably 600. Mm -hmm. Los Angeles is probably 200. London is 150. The mm -hmm. Netherlands is new. Mm -hmm. uh, Singapore, probably 100 people. Mm -hmm. Australia, a handful of people. So New York mm -hmm. is the most, and then London and LA really mirror each other, which makes a lot of sense as, you know, hubs of business. Yeah. So the reason why I'm asking that actually, because there are a lot of questions and there's a whole trend, you know, about distributed work, remote work, and yeah. people wanted to know, like, what's your take on being remote and having distributed teams, like also allowing people to come into the office or not come into the office. And then also, how do you scale culture uh, with, you know, other offices, departments, and when you have to scale it remotely or, you know, when you distribute. Yeah. So uh, yeah. tell us more about that. <laughs> so I think hybrid is the way to go. I think mm -hmm. hybrid for our company is fantastic. That's not to say that we don't have remote workers. Absolutely, we do. You have to lean in a little bit more with them and they need to lean in more with you. Like, I think that's that's literally like the deal, which is cool. You wanna live in Argentina? That's fantastic, but I really need you to show up, be present mm -hmm. on, these, on the screen. Lean mm -hmm. in, part of the team. We're gonna embrace you. You know, We'll do everything that we can and more to really bring you across with us. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think that's, that's the first thing. Zoom, it's wonderful and effective and it allows for an enormous amount of intimacy and relationship building if you are open to it. Mm -hmm. If you're not open to it, then it's a real detractor. Mm -hmm. you know, then I would suggest you're in an office. You're an office person. If, if, if you're a person that's like this on Zoom, you know, well, no one really, that's not going to be helpful. So are you like this on Zoom with your mm -hmm. arms? Um, and in terms of building culture and scaling culture, it's everything we talked about, mm -hmm. but on steroids, really mm -hmm. acknowledging what a person's saying and not saying, because I can look right at you. You know, I have no idea what's going on from the shoulders <laughs> down, but I'm going to imagine sometimes people are nervous and sometimes they're tapping their foot and Sometimes they're in their pajamas and it's all good. We just mm -hmm. want people to show up in a way that steers us towards creativity, steers mm -hmm. us towards camaraderie, you know, steers us, steers us towards connection and safety. Mm -hmm. So if that can happen on Zoom, then fantastic. And for the most part, it is happening. Mm -hmm. The one thing I'll say that I need to enunciate all the time is the camera's on. Mm, yeah. Unless, of course, you're having a terrible day and, you know, or you get a phone call and you just say, like, be right back. Mm -hmm. But other than that, you know, I, I would like the cameras to be on. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, would you say you have a lot of people like doing remote work only? Or you said, you know, you're more on a hybrid model. Um, so, do you have like a lot of people working remotely or not, not a significant percentage? Yeah. I mean, it is, it, it, people are still working remotely from COVID and have mm -hmm. moved away. Um, mm -hmm. And then in Europe, we have people all over that don't go into an office and mm -hmm. Mexico city also uh, mm -hmm. and Singapore, Southeast Asia. 
-hmm. So yeah, I would say 20% maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 20%. It's yeah, it's, 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 you know, also a big percentage, I think. Um, and so do you have um, any specific advice maybe or practices besides, um, you know, trying to be uh, that, you know, present and be a good leader and also uh, try to, you know, intentionally help the person to, to feel comfortable to express, you know, their concerns or something that they're struggling with. Like, um, do you have maybe specific tips? Okay, if uh, your team is remote or distributed, like uh, these are the kind of interactions you'd like to have, or you need to have more of um, something specific to remote setting. Or you would say just try to, yeah, you know, scale what you would do in person and talk to people as much as possible. Well, yes. I would say continue to try to talk to people as much as possible on a 15 minute basis, pretty much, or 30 minute, if you have that kind of time. But I would also do stand up meetings where everyone is you know, showing up on Monday at the same time or showing up on mm -hmm. Tuesday at the same time, mm -hmm. just rituals. People need routine rituals. Mm -hmm. They need to make things uh, actionable. You know what I mean? So... Mm -hmm. You know, so maybe on every Friday at noon, East Coast, we can still get London and we can still get LA and Mexico mm -hmm. and Canada. You know, what? let's do, let's do something. Let's, let's do something that for this one team. We all yeah. get together and we share, you know, the best things that have happened this week, or we share the thorn. Mm -hmm. we, you know, you, you have to be a little bit cre <clears throat> creative. Uh, you know what somebody asked me a question um but how do you connect kind of with a whole person when in remote setting so um i understand you know how to uh do the stand-up meetings or uh, work on work-related issues but for example how do you simulate maybe you have some ideas those um random coffee breaks and you know coffee <laughs> conversations yeah. Do you do anything uh, around that specifically? Yeah. So we do the same. yeah, it's the same thing. I mean, you, you set up a virtual coffee date with mm -hmm. someone. I do a lot of um, you know, icebreakers. You know, mm -hmm. when I'm talking to one to many people, I'm always trying to connect who's on the screen. So like, you know, what was the first concert you went to or, you know, all kinds of stuff. There's great, great icebreakers. But the point mm -hmm. of that is for people to connect to one another in different offices or in different locations. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm happy and I love knowing like what, what the first concert was people went to, but I'd rather them share, you know, a lot of people are very similar age groups here. So it's, oh, I went to Britney Spears. I went to Britney Spears. I went to Backstreet Boys. I went, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. So making things inviting you know intentionally consistently creating opportunities for people to connect mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the name of the game and be inventive about it be innovative about it you know it doesn't always have to be about the project you're on yeah that's what i meant yeah and i think what yeah. people don't think oh how do you um implement you know this fun aspect of work this human aspect when uh you remote when you distribute when you don't see each other face to face um and and what i'm hearing is yeah just create intentionally those moments to yeah. for that fun to happen right because guess what they're not going to happen unless you create them unless you proactively do mm -hmm. something like mm -hmm. i say you know the ball doesn't just come to us you have to go for it you have to go after it and mm -hmm. in doing that, you will make people feel connection. You will make people feel psychologically safe. These are things we want. Mm -hmm. You know, that's uh, how you foster growth. Um, thank you, you know, so much, uh, Claude, for, for sharing all of this um, wisdom and tips and advice and your personal experience. I really appreciate it. Um, is there anything else you, at the end of our conversation, that you'd like to add? Uh, maybe maybe a question that you wish I'd, uh, I asked you, but I didn't about culture or people leading people. Is there anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I think the one question I would ask everyone is, how do you show up every day? Mm -hmm. Really, really, really get real. Are you present? 
Are you there for others or are you there for yourself? Are you judging people with your subjective opinions? And if so, do they know that? Like get, mm -hmm. get real. Like this is the time to get real. This is where the entire work paradigm is changing right now. We're a part of that change. So like have that conversation with yourself. And then if you feel like you can open up to someone else, have that conversation. How do mm -hmm. I show up? I mm -hmm. want to be the best leader I possibly can. I want this culture to be a happy culture, a healthy culture. How mm -hmm. can I do that? Yeah, such a great question. And I believe also that it applies to other areas of our life. Like just yeah. ask people, you know, I want to be, I don't know, a great spouse, a great friend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, How do I show seriously. Up? Yeah, I mean, right? Right? <laughs> and you said yeah. it earlier. We have so much light inside of us. And your candle can light a thousand candles. And so can mine. Yeah. And so can theirs. So powerful. Yeah, we just need to remember that, that we all have that. Yeah. Uh, Claude, thank you so much for this conversation. I so appreciate your time, your energy, and the, your journey and um, sharing it with us. Um, the last question, where can people connect with you? Where can people yeah. learn? From, um, you can find yeah, you find me on LinkedIn, um, for sure. You can find me on my website or my email, Claude at ClaudeSilver.com. Um, I would say LinkedIn is where I'm most vocal, but mm -hmm. I'd love to hear from anyone. And uh, I'm always here when people reach out. I, I always get back to them. So it might take me a little bit of time, but I would love to hear from anyone. Yes, uh, so I'm going to share that in the show notes and I highly encourage people to connect with you, to learn from you. Also, you have uh, so much to, uh, to share and to teach. Uh, thank, thank you, Claude. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.